both men and women think about sex more than they think about food or sleep during the day. It goes to men capable of having at least two sexual acts per week compared to those who are unable to do that, the risk of cardiac death is significantly lower. Now, for the next lecture, and the topic is on treatment strategies on pre uh, premature andropause, therapeutic approach and restorations of male sexual function. Our distinguished speaker is a medical doctor with over 25 years of experience, having treated more than 10,000 patients under his care in a career that spans two continents, Europe and Asia. He is the current medical director and head of medical advisory board of the European Wellness International, Dean at the International University of Bioregenerative Sciences, USA, and a member of the editorial board of three prestigious American medical journals. He is an internationally accredited educator, holds a PhD in surgery from the Institute of Reconstructive and Emergency Surgery. Academy of Medical Sciences of Ukraine and a postdoctorate degree in regenerative medicine and tissue engineering from Utrecht University. He has authored and co authored five books and over 70 articles published in medical journals worldwide. He is also the founder of the Global Biohack Alliance. Ladies and gentlemen, our next speaker, Dr. Dimitro Klokko. I'm Dr. Dimitro Klokko, and uh, the topic of my today's presentation is uh, treatment strategies in premature andropause and therapeutic approach to restoration of male sexual function. I have a disclaimer here for you. This uh, presentation, my lecture today, is for educational purposes only. So, one can argue that aging is inevitable and each and every one of us is doomed to deteriorate our bodily functions and ultimately become old and dysfunctional. Shall we embrace the aging? Well, we can embrace aging and preserve a decent performance status and functionality in the same time, at least to some extent, as much as possible and preferably all of it. When speaking about preserving bodily functions, uh, performance status, generally about wellness, well-being, the quality of life, the topic of sexual function inevitably comes up. And the important, importance of sex and a sexual function is multidimensional and intricately linked to daily activities. Let's look at the uh, this uh, publication by Fisher and Moe in Pittenge in a journal of sex research published uh, a few years ago in 2012. <clears throat> and this study, uh, they presented the results of this study which is conducted on a general population. And it turns out that amount of sex thoughts per day in man cohort was up to 388 and up to 140 in women. It's on the average both men and women think about sex more than they think about food or sleep during the day. Uh, think of the uh, push-ups. Uh, this one study says that uh, men above 40 years old are capable of doing 40 push-ups or more in one go have at least 60% less chances of acute cardiac death. So same goes to men capable of having at least two sexual acts per week compared to those who are unable to do that. The risk of cardiac death is significantly lower in the population, in the category, the group of patients or people, <clears throat> individuals who are capable to uh, have that uh, regular, more or less frequent sexual activity. 
20 and 36 percent 20 in our study and 36 percent in Australian study reduction of prostate cancer in male population and then this wonderful paper uh, published in 2020 very fresh and <clears throat> in this paper the authors they uh, present the data from the English longitudinal study of aging and they have found out that reduction of sexual activity and desire and increases in sexual problems in both genders are strongly associated with greater risk of occurrence of cancer, chronic heart disease, stroke, and more broadly limiting long-standing illnesses and poor status of health. And they've also concluded that the development of interventions to promote sexual health and well-being at all the age well, and we can extrapolate that to all ages, of course, without doubt, may offer a considerable opportunity to reduce the burden of disease in the later life. So, of life. And um, let's look at the factors contributing to decline of the sexual function in men. Uh, we are all familiar with um, this paradigm and it is even uh, brought to the level of the guidelines and specifically talking about the guidelines from the american urological association so according to this um, sort of accepted norm um, there is a yearly <clears throat> decline in the basal testosterone production and the decline of the total testosterone level in males after age of 30 years old on average uh, at the rate of 1 to 1.5 percent per year of reduction of total testosterone values and free testosterone yearly reduction 2 to 3 percent per year strongly challenge this uh, concept due to many reasons uh, just to name a few uh, well based on the notion that uh, low testosterone syndrome is associated generally in, in general with a poorer state of health increased risk of metabolic syndrome increased risk of obesity depression musculoskeletal decline and fatigue and then we have a notion of the generational decline of testosterone a uh, study which was published uh, in uh, year 2007 in the Journal of Clinical Endocrinology and Metabolism they revealed there's a, a drop in the uh, uh, entire population testosterone level that happens for the past 30 40 years so since 1980 the average levels declined about one percent per year and we're talking about the entire population so it means that a 60 year old man in the year 2004 had testosterone levels on average uh, about 17 percent lower than those uh, 60 year olds in late 80s another study done in denmark revealed a double digit decline among men born in 1960s compared to those born in 1920s so there's a double digit decline of a testosterone level uh, over the generations we can speculate a lot about that why is it happening it's because of the food the environment increased stress and so on and so forth but that is not the topic of this uh today's lecture decline of the sexual function in males and specifically i'm talking about the morphological changes or the morphological decline in penile tissue such as decreased volume and atrophy of sinusoidal smooth muscles loss of elastic fibers in sinusoids and venules and degenerative and atrophic changes in collagen fibers of the tunica albuginea it is strongly associated with hormonal changes as well such as increase in stress hormone that negatively influences smooth muscle relaxation and we're talking about chronic stress overstress increased cortisol production and the syndrome of the pregnenolone steel the low androgens the low t uh, causes an accelerated smooth muscle apoptosis in the cavernous bodies in the penile tissues and increased connective tissue components such as the 
uh, which results in impaired relaxation of the smooth muscles. And we understand from the physiology of the erection, if there is an impaired relaxation of the smooth muscle, means weaker erection. And last but not the least is the syndrome of the ven venous leak or the failure of the venous occlusive mechanism, which is um, a tremendously underrated component. Interestingly, is that the decrease of percentage of smooth muscles that happens with age, the most dramatic drop in the volume of the smooth muscle cells in the cabernet's bodies happens between the age of 30 to 40 years old. And we're talking more than 50% reduction of the smooth muscles uh, uh, between the, those who are below 40 years old. So by the age of, age of 40, on the average, only 46% is remaining. The 46% of the smooth muscles in the cavernous bodies are remaining on the average in a 40-year-old individual. Between ages uh, uh, 40 to 60 years old, there's another just 4 to 5% decline is occurring. So it's up to 40%, and then individuals older than 60 years old, another 5%, 35%. So we can clearly see that the most dramatic changes in terms of the morphology of the, uh, in the penile tissue are occurring in the fourth decade of life between 30 and 40 years old. So it means that the, uh, if you want a timely started uh, treatment uh, any treatment paradigm, uh, it has to be started about this uh, uh, during this um, uh, age, you know, and if, if you're gonna wait and delay the treatment to the fifth, sixth uh, and so on decade of life, uh, it will be more difficult to preserve, restore or reverse these changes. There's a reduction of the collagen type three, uh, the penile tissue contains uh, three times of, mainly, mostly three times of the collagen, one, three, and four. So there's a notable reduction of the uh, content uh, of the collagen type three, which is found in distensible elastic tissue. And it is essential for the normal tensile strength, especially of the tunic albuginea, which is lost also between the age of 30 to 40 years old. The next thing we observe the decrease of peak systolic velocity in cavernous flow and again the most dramatic decrease in the peak systolic velocity is happening between the age of 30 to 40 years old. Atherosclerotic vascular alterations in a bed, in the arterial bed of the penis and these fibrotic changes start in the distal penile tissues and the small branches of the vessels and slowly, gradually uh, uh, move towards the proximal direction and affect larger size volume. And of course, there's a decrease of the nitric oxide synthetase and decrease of the NAD activity in the penile tissue. Divided or classified into three categories, vasculogenic, neurogenic, and hormonal. And in these categories, the venous leak being a vasculogenic component and the hormonal age-related uh, or mm, disease or health-related uh, hormonal decline are the main contributing factors in terms of the, being the cause of the erectile dysfunction. So the treatment approaches are as follows. One of them, the core ingredient, uh, the core component of uh, um, this treatment protocol is so-called the biohormonal therapy, which is uh, done using the optimization or uh, normalization or, or of the normal endogenous production synthesis of the hormones. And uh, we use uh, a particular product which uh, uh, is an example of the cell extracts, the mitochondrial cell extracts, known as the male fertility. It has five main ingredients, such as the uh, cell extracts or the peptides specific to the adrenal cortex, liver, hypothalamic peptides, pituitary, and testicular peptides. For those who want to know more about it, you can read this uh, article that was published quite some time ago in a journal of psychoneuroendocrinology in the United Kingdom in 1992, titled Effects of Hypothalamic Peptides on the Aging Brain. 
and the entire study has been published and described in the uh, Journal of Obstetrics and Gynecology International Journal. Its title is Biohormonal Revitalization Therapy from the Perspective of Biological Regenerative Medicine. Uh, this particular study is involved both males and females, so we were looking in the premature menopause and premature andropause, but I'm presenting the premature andropause, just the male part of it. Uh, we had uh, uh, 26 males uh, uh, were included in that study, the volunteers, 26 volunteers, in the reproductive age from 29 to 47 years of age, and the inclusion criteria were clinical manifestations of early andropause and erectile dysfunction confirmed by at least two biochemical investigations. The patients were, uh, they've undergone uh, the biohormonal optimization or biohormonal therapy protocol that include included the mitoorganelles, the five in one male fertility, which includes the adrenal cortex, liver, hypothalamic, pituitary and testicular peptides. Uh, twice per week, uh, span from three to four months. And of course, there were other uh, ingredients, other treatment uh, included uh, based on the indication and the status of every particular individual volunteer in this group, whether, uh, of course, there were diet uh, adjustments, uh, 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 proper adequate amount of cholesterol, um, uh, was included in a diet of this patient, supplementation with either pregnenolone or the DHEA. Uh, some patients may have received the um, uh, HCG and all it all was adjusted depending on the uh, exact case. But uh, what was universally implemented uh, was uh, specifically the mitoorganelles, male revitalization, male fertility set five in one, uh, twice per week, one while twice per week, in a span of uh, three to four months. And what we have found out, the outcomes of that, is that, uh, yes, of course, we can see that on the day zero, most of the patients, all of the patients were actually at a lower testosterone level, low tes total testosterone, and within four months, by the end of the month four, day 120, when this protocol was implemented, we had a significant improvement raise in the total testosterone and free testosterone level. Uh, there was no TRT implemented for these patients, at least for a year. And uh, uh, there was basically just uh, uh, the maintenance, you know, with the supplementation. And there was uh, no uh, cell therapy given after this four months protocol anymore. But we can see that results were quite steady and stable uh, the total testosterone level and the free testosterone level you can read the article it's on all the charts and the descriptions are there uh, so we have quite a stable level plateau of the total testosterone level endogenously produced for at least a year follow up after the given treatment protocol that's how the hormonal decline, the premature hormonal decline was tackled in the, uh, this cohort of individuals with premature andropause. In the same time, what was done in the same time was the intracorporeal administration of that specific cell therapy product. So in this case, we did not use mitochondrial uh, cell extracts, the mitoorganelles, but we use the nanomites because of the, uh, they're more suitable for the topical administration uh, or they're more suitable for to be administered in the, uh, specifically in the uh, penile tissue. And uh, we're talking about 10 milliliters of uh, either non-organopeptides, uh, placental growth factors or the non-organopeptides extracts from the test testicular tissue. Uh, 10 milliliters uh, in total volume that was administered into the cavernous bodies uh, on the right and left side uh, at 10 o'clock and 2 o'clock strictly with a, uh, a 90 degree angle as you can see here on the uh, right side of the slide with or without MSCs. 
Yeah, so some uh, individuals they had MSCs added, some not. Uh, when uh, speaking about the amount of how much of the MSCs, usually it's from 5 to 25 million of sales, depends on the case. But uh, mostly, uh, generally what was used, the NOP mixture of the NOP placenta and the NOP test is all together. I have a brief demo of uh, how the procedure is done. Uh, in this demo we did not include the demonstration of the penile block. Yeah, do not take this video as a uh, uh, learning platform or the training video, it's just for the demo demonstration purposes. So it's administration of about 2.53 milliliters of uh, cell therapy product proximally, 2 milliliters distally and 0.51 mil is administered in the grounds of penis. That's on one side, then the same procedure is repeated on the uh, opposite side. For those who are interested in uh, uh, the entire protocols of this uh, uh, treatment and you want to know more and you want to really uh, learn it up, uh, please we welcome everyone to join our workshops in European Wellness Academy. Uh, our webinars where we can uh, talk more in details about uh, those procedures. Now, what, how, how does it work? How exactly uh, do those uh, uh, cell extracts, these uh, nanomice organopeptides, influence the status of the penile tissues? Well, it is based on the anti-apoptotic effect, anti-fibrotic effect, it promotes angiogenesis, neoangiogenesis, overall uh, remodeling of the uh, extracellular matrix and cell cellular proliferations. We have an also article published on that. If you are interested in learning more about placenta therapy, please uh, feel free, you're welcome to read that. And the main biologically active ingredients in the uh, these uh, uh, placental and testicular extracts, the nanomice uh, extracts, are as follows. It's the epidermal growth factor that stimulates cell migration and proliferation of cells for endothelial repair and regeneration. It's the insulin-like growth factors, the famous IGF, that promotes growth of smooth, smooth muscle cells and cell proliferation. It's a platelet-derived growth factor. Uh, that promotes cell differentiation, proliferation and migration and also promotes a tissue remodeling. Transforming growth factor as well is involved heavily in penile tissue remodeling and the connective tissue remodeling and vascular endothelial growth factor that regulates angiogenesis, the rebuild of the sinusoid in the cavernous bodies, it has the hematopoietic properties and also it has a very strong neuroprotective effect for the penile nerves. Uh, a patient might ask you, a patient will ask you definitely, of where can they have the sexual intercourse? Well, very easy, the same day, whenever they want. Uh, as for the other complementary therapies that also can be used in adjunct to biohormonal revitalization and intracorporeal injections are such therapies as low intensity shockwave therapy and uh, application of the vacuum erection devices. And that can be used either once in a week, once in two weeks, 10, 15, 20 minutes of vacuum uh, and uh, <clears throat> a session of uh, low intensity shock wave, very well described, uh, is a good data, good evidence for that and works wonderfully in conjunction with the uh, above mentioned treatment methods. What are the outcomes of the biohormonal therapy combined with intracorporeal injections? Well, they are as follows. First of all, it's a return of the morning erections that uh, patients Many patients, uh, they noted within two or three days after the protocol has started. Next, increased libido, increased penile hardness, more stable erections, increased 
rate of successful vaginal penetration and ability to maintain erection throughout the entire sexual intercourse until climax. Increased penile girth. So it's literally, it promotes the uh, anatomical uh, rebuild of the penile tissue. It increased frequency and quality of sexual intercourse. Increased peak systolic velocity penile blood flow. Significant improvement of mood and reduction of depression. Overall optimization of hormonal profile. And ultimately, it all results in a massive health benefits and improvement of quality of life. Biohormonal revitalization via reactivation or the optimization, the modulation of the function of the hypothalamus, pituitary, adrenal, testicular axis, and minimally invasive cell therapy based procedures are safe and effective treatment methods for male sexual function, revitalization, and rejuvenation. Whether we're talking about premature andropause or we're talking about andropause in the later life. Uh, I invite everyone to check out uh, for more information on our website, European Wellness Academy, uh, about the webinars and workshops and all sorts of events for uh, service providers and medical practitioners from all over the world. Those who are interested to pursue um, uh, regenerative medicine and as a career and uh, learn the science of bioregeneration, uh, we welcome you in the IUBRS, uh, International University of Bioregenerative Sciences. That will, uh, the courses and the educational programs that are provided by IUBRS may give a good boost or a kickstart to your career and, and your practice. And uh, uh, if you're interested to know more about the mitoorganelles, if you want to know more about the nano organopeptides, please visit the mf-plus.com. It's the, our industry partner uh, of the European Wellness International Group. And you can learn more about the products that they have. I would like to thank everyone, uh, wish everyone a very strong, good health, have a good mood and uh, stay healthy, be alive and have fun. It was Dr. Dmitro Klokal with you. Uh, see you next year. Thank you very much for that superb and very significant lecture, Dr. Klokal. Uh, nice to see you looking great. Okay, so we'll have you Thank you, you so much. Thank you. Yeah. Yes.